Hello and welcome to today's edition of the Kel Toothpaste Peel Show. It's proudly brought to you by the Kel 360 Kel Chuckle and Kel Kids Toothpaste. My beautiful outfit for today is proudly brought to you by Cafe Clothing. You can contact them on all our social media platforms for this beautiful outfit. Atticus once said, she's powerful, not because she wasn't scared, but because she went on despite the fear. My guests symbolizes everything in that quote they have just given you. She's one person that you just had to sit in the comfort of your home while she takes you around the globe. I'm sure you're wondering who my guest is for today. Don't go anywhere, just wait. I'll introduce her to you shortly. I am Emefa Apau, and this is a Kel Toothpaste Peel Show. We're right back and we get talking with a phenomenal lady for today. Mama Jose. Ah, the fair, fair. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Charcoal Toothpaste. Healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kel Chocolate Toothpaste, Sankofa, Yenchi, Kel Chocolate Toothpaste, Happy, Happy Smile. This is the Kel Toothpaste PL Show brought to you by Kel 360, Kel Chocolate and Kel Kids. Welcome back from the break. I know you are eager as I am. Uh, in fact, as for me, I can safely say that I'm starstruck about my guests for today. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'll give you some clues and see if you can identify who my guest is for today. So my guest for today, I've been watching her when I was a child and I got to travel to a number of countries. In fact, all the continents, I can safely say. Sometimes also I got to see a relative or so somewhere greeting us from abroad. You still don't know. I'm sure when I said greetings from abroad, uh, I gave you a clue there. My guest has been hosting that show for an uncountable number of years. We know her as Nana Ajwa Awendo, but she's also Obapa Ajwecha the first in Koswahima of Ifija Kwabre. Not just that, she's also the Continental Board Chair for African Queens and Women Cultural Leaders. She's my guest on the Phenomenal Lady Show. It's a good time to actually, I have to give her a standing ovation to welcome her uh, to the show. Welcome. Uh, thank you so you see, much. You see, I'm blushing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited to be I hosting you today. I am equally excited. I welcome. Impressed. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much uh, for honoring our invitation. Thank you. See, my first thing I want to find out from you how it all started, like greetings from abroad. I'm so interested in it. <laughs> I've been waiting to ask about it. And then how many continents you have visited, how many countries you have visited, if you remember. Mm, thank you and um, hi to everybody. <laughs> well, greetings, how did it start? Um, years ago, I was lecturing at NAFTI and I had opportunity of studying in Radio Netherlands Training Center. So I went to do training of trainers course. And then as part of my dissertation, I was supposed to do a documentary. So you have the options to choose your subject. I decided to do something that is related. And whilst I was there, I had opportunity of relating to some of the Ghanaian community uh, in Holland. I learned a lot from that interaction because those days, and I'm talking about 26 to to 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Those days, we didn't have this kind of interactions, daily interactions. And everybody thought that Ghanaians who were abroad were something else. And so when I went and I was confronted with the cultural shock, I decided that I would want to tell a story about it. But 
it, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work Why? out. It didn't work out because unlike today, people were not too ready to share their stories. So I got somebody who said yes, and then we went through all the screening, talking, orientation, everything, and we were ready to pick the camera to shoot. Mm -hmm. And then the next day when I came back, he says, uh, I spoke to my brother, he says, uh, now you're the work of two TV so Ghana, and everybody will see you. And they thought you were abroad, isn't it? But you were living in a drophy. Mm. So the story of the Ghanaian traveling out of the country and we all assuming that they were in it plush buildings, fine. they were in colleges and they were doing, you know, all that to be able to gather money and bring back home wasn't the same story that I was confronted with. So I wanted to share the story, but it didn't work out. So when I got back, I was really curious. I even attempted to do the Northern travel because part of my research gave me the insights that some of the Ghanaian young men and women went on the Northern trip to arrive in Europe. So I, I wanted to do that trip and shoot a documentary about it. Why do people want to go on a risky trip just to arrive in Europe? And how did they do it and all that? I was really curious. It took me about three years uh, my husband was then lecturing at NAFTI. We did a lot. We even got a car, a, a Jeep, the ones without electric cars, because we heard that the electrical, you can, the electrical, something can fail on the desert. Mm -hmm. And so you were looking for a rugged car that would take you and that wouldn't have any problem. Long story short, we, we didn't go on the trip. So one day he was in school in, in the States and then he called me and said, you know, this is your idea of trying to get this story out. It probably will work because the Ghanaian community in Chicago, it's a very strong one. So why don't we start with that? And I said, well, wow, that's a good idea. We can actually repackage the program program into edutainment. Mm. In that case, people are ready to say hello and hi. And whilst you're doing that, you can have the conversation. You can have the conversation and still get your stories out. Because people will not just start talking, but when you say chair we are very happy to do that. And whilst we are doing that, we started the interventions, we started the interrogations, we started the conversations and the, you know, and that's how it started. So it started from Chicago. It started from Chicago and it was winter. That was the first trip and I was breastfeeding. What would make you do that? The urge to achieve a dream that you have nurtured for years and it didn't matter the timing. The fact that he says this is it's possible, and it's time. I just didn't really mind the conditions. Okay. Was this baby you were breastfeeding our very own if talented yeah. if yeah? <laughs> no. Interestingly, <laughs> it's her her brother behind. Okay. Yeah. If yeah was was a, a young girl at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's her brother who is now 25 years old. Please, when is it coming back? It's back now. It's back now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's back 25 now. 25 years. Yes, wow. it's back on Adum TV. So we are now doing greetings and back home again. So at the last count, how many countries did you visit? I can't count. Honestly, because at a point in time, we were counting the states in the st in USA as countries. Because I remember some time ago, we traveled from New York City to California, and it took us three days because I was, I was afraid to fly. Oh, yes, yeah, true. Why? Uh, I'm, I don't want to For fly. For somebody who was... I'm always on the flight. I'm afraid to fly, especially internal flights. I hate it. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Kumasi six hours plus instead of flight. I mean, but it's true. Not that I don't. Okay. I do. I do when I have to. Mm -hmm. But if That's... I have the option, I'll do the three days. I do train. I do uh, the bus, I do anything possible in Europe. I do everything but fly. I know I fast forwarded everything because of my curiosity, <laughs> but I'll take you back now. I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very interested. So the little Nanajua window mm -hmm. growing up, mm -hmm. maybe just a summary. I have some pictures I've stolen from you that I'll be showing to the entire world <laughs> shortly in our Sit to Oak segment. But briefly, 
Tell me about how growing up was like. You were all rosy for you? Not that rosy, and but not that bad. Mm. Yeah, I was born by two educationists. My mom and my dad are both uh, people who uh, taught in schools, ended up at education office. My dad became the assistant headmaster of Doma Secondary School. My mommy was uh, in school. And we are eight siblings. I'm the first. We traveled quite a bit because of the nature now of the work. We see the, where you got it from. <laughs> <laughs> we see where the, you got it from. The nature of the work of our parents. And then I ended up at Doma Secondary School, and that's where I did both O and A levels. And then eventually I go to enter NAFTI. I was a camera woman before I got NAFTI. That's so. where Premier Production came uh, from. Yes, then. and that's where all that began. And then I had opportunity to study what I loved. Because I had started camera, I went to specialize as an editor. So I could do a combination of the two. I still edit. Yeah, yeah, I still edit. I still edit the greetings you watch today. Wow. I edit it myself. Let's get into our Sea to Oak segment, mm -hmm. uh, which is brought to you by the Kill Kids uh, Toothpaste. Uh, now it's easy for your children to brush their teeth because they don't have to uh, go through all the stress anymore. This one is has the strawberry flavor in it and it makes it easy for them to always want to brush their teeth. It's FDA approved and it prevents uh, tooth decay, all the cavity and keeps, and keeps their gum very strong. It's for two to six years, very safe. C to Oak for Nanajwa Awindo. That's the, the funky Obapa Ancha, the first. <laughs> wow, I'm sure these bring memories. I like the it's, one you were posed by the, the, car. the car. Were you a model then? No. <laughs> I, I traveled to Augsburg in Germany for a film festival, and that's when I took that picture. Would you say that the way you grew up really impacted the kind of person that you became? I should say so. My parents didn't have boys at the beginning when we were being born, so we were brought up to be everything. I was washing cars, I was climbing trees, doing all that, playing football. When football, ladies football started in Ghana, I was one of those who was, mm. who was playing. Yeah, pioneers of black yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do ladies those days. I would fast forward now to after NAFTI, whilst you were teaching there. I know uh, some of your students, are they still in touch with you? Yes, a lot of them. I'm sure they've made you proud. And I'm proud of them too, because, I mean, it's heartwarming to see people you have thought to now be lecturers themselves. Mm. So it's exciting. What would you say about the film industry that we have currently as it stands? We are growing. We've grown. We've come very far looking at the kind of technology that we have, looking at especially the youth. Mm -hmm. Today I was telling um, my peer that my son, Farai, does animation, editing, camera, everything put together. But he went to Nafti as a set designer. He did graphics and other things. But he graduated as a full-blown filmmaker. You know, so our younger ones are even doing better than us. And I think we have an industry that is very vibrant now. And there's so much opportunity for, for everybody who is interested in the industry. We just need to work hard at it. We need to um, look at the ethics part of it and uh, get to understand a few things so that it's, it's all encompassing. It's not just I'm very good at some of them. Mm -hmm. And there are people that I may not hire for any reason, but they could be very good. But their human relation is something else. So these are some of the things that as a teacher or as a trainer, Anytime I have the opportunity, I want to hammer on. Our industry is good, it's mm. vibrant, it has resources, it has promises. And anybody who wants to enter the film industry should go ahead and do that. But we've heard many say that it's not a thriving industry. It's not uh, maybe the technicals we have, but in terms of the creative and everything, it's not an industry that we can boast of compared to what we see in Nigeria, for instance. Oh, you, you see, it's very difficult to compare Ghana and Nigeria because 
whatever you're doing has to do with numbers. If a Nigerian produces one film and it goes even around the country one time, that's quite a bit. Mm. You can compare that to Ghana. How many cinemas do we have? What kind of platform do we have? What's the distribution channel? What do we have in place that supports our film industry that makes it like uh, rewarding in, in terms of investments and rewards? Nigeria has quite a bit of systems in place that supports the industry. Distribution channels are good compared to ours. You can't say it's the topmost or the best, but compared to ours, it's better than ours. So these are things that we could learn from, and we do have opportunity of sometimes having interactions. We have film festivals, programs, seminars, workshops, and we have platforms that we are able to interact and look at best practices al along the way, not just Nigeria, in Africa as a whole. So we have to go ahead, continue to engage as much as we can and learn a lot and bring it back home to support our growth. On and off the screens, uh, you've impacted many, many, many lives and off the classroom as well. So you get to run uh, premier productions, you're working on greetings from abroad, you're also the Inkoswa Hema for Fija Kwabre. How are you able to put all this together and still be effective at it? Time management is one thing. I also, 24 hours enough for you. No, I have negotiated with God. So <laughs> we have our own way of going about it. I am used to working too many hours in the night. Sometimes when you want to do creative work, it's not interesting when people just pop in. And I, should I do this? Oh, mommy, can I do that? And so you find a good time that you are not disturbed and you block that time so you do creative. I can go all out and stay home 24 hours, 48 hours and do nothing. And I'm home and I'm just playing mother and going to the kitchen and cooking. And you do, cook? I do, a, a cook is my, my hobby. I can cook five dishes standing at my stove one time. What do you say to those um, feminists now that we see that say that once you are accomplished like you, the kitchen is not your space? I was brought up differently. And so I wouldn't argue. I wouldn't also say that is uh, the good way or the best way to go or not. I wouldn't do that. I was brought up to be a woman of substance. And I think going to the kitchen and cooking for my family is one of it. And I don't see anything wrong with it. I stand with you. I think <laughs> I'll tour your path any day. It takes us to the 360 and it's brought to you by the Kel 360 toothpaste. And that has the mint and um, it gives you that cool, fresh breath all day long. Also FDA approved and it's safe for the entire family. Let's get into 360 here on the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. Nana Hima Ajua Arindo is the development queen mother of a Fijai Kwabre district in Ashanti Kingdom in Ghana. As the first professional video camera woman in Ghana and an editor by training, she has produced over 30 video documentaries, especially on development oriented issues. As a cultural leader, Nana Hima intensified her niche to bring together development-oriented queen mothers across the country to pursue self-actualization and, by extension, their community development. Nana Hima is a motivational and inspirational public speaker, youth empowerment campaigner, and a great mentor. Well, so that's our, our 360 <laughs> eh? that sums up everything. I see that you have a thing for, you know, nurturing young girls. Can I be one of them? Yes, okay. you're welcome. All right, thank you. So let's go on. <laughs> like, what exactly do you get to do for these young ones? A few uh, months ago, four of our teenage girls graduated from Mansell Vocational. It was one of the most exciting times in my life because 2013, when we decided, uh, courtesy one of uh, our ladies, um, 
who has passed, may her soul rest in peace, mm -hmm. in Fuanse, in the Kwanguma district, who requested that I support a process that she had initiated in her district in school to bring teenage mothers back to school. When she told me about this, I said, wow, this is a good idea. But you see, I'm working with quite a number of communities. So why don't we look at a project that will be country-based? And we can start small, though, but we can expand it into the communities across the nation. And she said, well, so you go ahead and do whatever it is. So we took a sheet of paper, which she presented to me, and, and produced about a 50-page proposal to see how we can, as a team at Obapa Development Foundation, work and get teenage mothers back into the classrooms. And those days, a lot of them had actually dropped off because of premature pregnancy, premature motherhood. So I personally bought into that concept and worked with my team and then we produced a proposal to share with our partners for them to appreciate the need for us all to come together to do this. So we started that project gradually, did a lot of community engagements, and eventually we enrolled 60 girls. Mm -hmm. And now we later added 10 in the Volta region, so it became 70 girls. We've come far from 2013, 2015, and now we have graduated some of the girls and the rest are in school. Some have dropped off. Of course, yeah. you should expect it. Some people have even gotten pregnant again. again and all that. So we've gone through pain, we've gone through stress, we've gone through all that. But eventually we have success stories mm. that at least some of the girls are now real women and they've started working on their own. They can earn income and take care of their babies. That's the whole idea. How is it like being an Inkoswahima? I know you've been talking about uh, the Opapa Foundation amongst the other things that you're doing, for instance. How is it like? So you know, and I know that Inkoswo means development. Mm -hmm. And in real cases for our education, uh, somebody might be in Stood in Kosohima in a community that the person doesn't really come from. The reason is that it is like giving you honorary citizenship in the communities. Even though my royal house has relationship with the Fija Kwabri, I didn't even know the details until after I was installed. And so my Edumhini says, oh, if you just have a good day, you will be able You understand? So eventually I got to know that at least there's a link. But the community, the Queen Mothers found me worthy of adding me to themselves. So they made me the uncle. Who wouldn't want you? And, <laughs> and in fact, it was not just a town. In my particular case, it was a community. And the reason why my strategy is different is because I was not serving just a town. If you have just one town, you could go into the community and do something for the town and it is okay, you know. But this is a situation where you are doing a whole community. So the strategy was just using Gimpa Marketing Management and empowering the queen mothers that I work with mm -hmm. so they can go and eventually empower their own communities. I am not God. My hand cannot cover the eyes of everybody. So I use my abilities to roll on to the queen mothers and then encourage them to also go and empower their communities. So that is how I did my Inkosohima. Wow. This is the Kill Toothpaste Peel Show. And my guest today is Nana Ajwa Awendo. That's how most of us know her, but she's been talking about her new it's not new. Uh, she's had it for some time now. She's the Kosohima of Ifija Kwabre, Nana Obapa, Encha the first. We'll take a quick break. We'll right back. Hello, my friends. My name is Kel Kate Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum, but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger, chicky chicky whiter, chicky chicky stronger. Yay! You did it! 
I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl Kids, happy smile. Thanks for staying with us. I know you didn't go far because of the conversation we're having with Mana Ajwa Awendo. And there are a few things that she does for herself. It takes us to the DIY segment brought to you by the Kale Chuckle Toothpaste. And um, she's a traditional person also. So she knows what they used to do. Uh, we have to grind charcoal, put the plantain pedunkle. And, and then... I like the advert. Yeah. <laughs> I like the, I love the advert so yeah. much. And we don't do that anymore. Now you can just use kale charcoal toothpaste and get the same effect. Let's get into DIY. Welcome to my DIY segment. Today, I'm going to um, go through a little sequence of how to do it yourself in editing. The platform you see right now is the Greetings from Abroad platform. This side is where you get the footage or what we call the rushes, what you bring in when you go out to shoot and then this side is the the recording part is where you edit so i'm going to create a clean sheet and then i'll take a few material and put it down so you can see how it is done hi this is better general of police mr james upon one asante man pepe pepe i'm not on it i'm not sure you're going to be the chairman of bbi or police this is somebody saying uh, a finishing apart to his family and uh, because we want to edit edit means that bring different materials and put it together in this particular case there are going to be like three people for example who are going to say their greetings we don't want it to be very long in that case we would take some part of the material of I think she apa o me ma obi bia I think she apa we we are self and I na we will end this one here so the rest I clear it off then we go to the next person okay Let's assume that in her case, the only part we want to take is So I expand the timeline so that I can see well. Then I splice where she reached and I go down, I reduce it so I can go to the beginning where she started speaking. Then we have our third person. Let's assume this is what we want from Nanahema. So I expand her platform and I splice and I put the rest of her material off. In editing, it doesn't matter the order in which you shot. You have the flexibility to bring any of them to any position. So let's listen to the sequence again. Okay, so it still makes sense. That is how editing is. You can squeeze it down by listening again and again and again and taking out some of the repetitions and then you still have a sequence that makes sense. So now I know rushes, I know sequencing and then cutting and, and joining. And you do this yourself? I do. Wow. So this is an edit which is a promo for Greetings from Abroad or? Is... Yeah, I mean, this was editing the main thing when I, we had finished the promo. And I was editing the real program. So okay. that was the timeline. She does things herself. Is there something that you've, you know now that you wish you knew back then when you started everything? In our field of work, you learn every day. We don't have the opportunity to have update courses as as you could do in you know you could do elsewhere. Mm -hmm. in, in Ghana, for example, for, I have graduated from beta cam to svhs to vhs to dv cam to digitization and all that by learning and doing it yourself so what happens is that whilst the system is changing 
you are learning and updating yourself so you can still be relevant. Because a lot of people has, have dropped off post-production post because when the system is changing and you are not up to date, you cannot understand. And it can actually get more complex as you're seeing it. Because when you finish this, before you go get all that trimmed off and you get a sequence right, now you go to the sound. So you now go doing sound correction. So all my sound level has to be at 12. So if I spoke lower and you spoke higher, I bring yours down, bring this up. So all sound has to be at 12. The, the lecturer in you is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming you know, out at this so point. So that is how it is. So you finish the sound, now you go to effects. Before you go to names, titles, whatever, whatever. You know, so it takes time to go through that and it can be very complex at a point in time. Yeah. So that is why you always have to learn. Learn, learn, learn. Education doesn't end and you have to be on your toes all the time. And that's the advice I'm, I'm taking with me. Mm -hmm. But you know, in our society, I think it's everywhere. Once you're seen on the screens, you're in the public eye, mm -hmm. You've birthed a superstar, your son is doing well, everything is going well for your family. I think you're super blessed. There are people who think that, Uni da dream bia. <laughs> but you're human. Mm. There must be some down moments and everything. How do you stay so strong? Because you are super strong. When I wake up in the morning and I pray and I thank God for life, I honestly leave everything else for him to handle. Because if I really want to check every minute, every step of my way and be figuring out how am I going to do this and how is he going to uh, be okay and all that, uh, I think it will be a big deal. And he just handles it. Yeah. Once you give it to him. Yeah. How um, come some of us can't do that? You can. Maybe you haven't put your mind to it yet. So you put your mind to it. Okay, so it's not like in the public eye, the way we think that everything is fine, no. they don't have problems. Do you, a, do you, you? I mean, of course, as mm. a human being, you should have issues. I don't have just one family, I have multiple mm -hmm. families and I have so many children. Yeah. So many. So you can get up in the morning and you have 200 calls. How do your children handle from... this? <laughs> to, oh, they, they, they know. They know. I mean, for example, the last time I went to Adidome with Efia, and we were supposed to have gone to have some time, you know. And then I said, you know, I'm in Sokpe area. I said, ah, I know, I know, I know. But your girls, eh, you have to go and see to them, you know. She understands. My team is a powerful team, and, and they manage the system. As a country, as a society, do you think you have been honored enough? I'm one of the people who do things without expecting rewards for it. I could be odd, I could be weird, but that's the truth. There was a time I was doing a project and, and somebody very close said that, oh, Meanwhile, this was a voluntary work, which I was even spending my personal money to do. You know, people don't understand voluntarism and people don't understand a too much juma. They feel there should be a reason for you to do that. But there ain't, isn't any reason if it is who you are. And you don't look over your shoulder when you're doing it. And you don't expect anybody to come and say thank you when you're doing it. And you just get satisfied because you have done it. That's all it is. There isn't anything more to that. And that's the truth. There's nothing more useful to add to what you have just said. Nana, un poisson. Amen. And that's how we wrap up uh, today's show. <laughs> I think Nana has summed it up nicely uh, for us today. You see, we have a tradition here on the Kel Toothpaste PO show. And first, I'll start with a small package that we have. We know that your children are many, <laughs> many, 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 many. So we'll start with the Kel Kids Toothpaste. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Kel Chuckle Toothpaste mm -hmm. and then the Kel 360 mm -hmm. put together from the Samara Company Limited. Since you watch the adverts and you love it, I love it. we know you <laughs> love the product as well. So this is from us to you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you. Nana Hima. Thank you so much. I, I love this. And we hope that you get a happy smile. Oh, and you, sure. Yeah. And because you're Nana Hima, we prepared hey. a beautiful 
a replica <laughs> of your stool <laughs> for you is from the PO show team. Hey, wonderful. To you, Nana. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it will get a very good uh, position in my hall. Yes. Hey, yeah. great. Yeah. I thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the show. Glory today. to God. Amen. Glory to God. And greetings to Ifia. I'll let her know. <laughs> and I'll <laughs> ask her to watch it. Yes, please. And, <laughs> and that's our show uh, for today is the Kale Toothpaste PL show. And my guest has been Nana Ajwa Awendo. And we'll get some greetings very soon. <laughs> <laughs> She's sure. also mm -hmm. uh, the Nkoswo Hima of Ifija Kwabre. Phenomenal lady by all standards. I am MFA Apau, and this has been the Kill to Pace PO show. Another edition comes your way, same time. Thank you. Your love is sweet, pass so below, so below, so below the sweet. Don't I come up with Paint, smiling, mommy, John Shay. Faint. Crunk, crunk, radio. Saint. On Pentoqua Casa Casane, complaint. Day.